Now, in this question, what I've done first of all is sketch the diagram, and what we're going to need to do is put on the forces acting on the particles and mark on the accelerations. Now, you'll see that the scale pan I've marked in as 15 kilograms because that's the combined mass of Q and R. So, let's put on the uh, forces. Well, first of all, we've got the weight acting downwards for the scale pan, so that's going to be 15 G Newtons. We've got a tension acting upwards of T Newtons. And they're the only forces acting on the 15 kilogram mass. So now we go over to P. We've got the weight. That's going to be 5 G Newtons. There's a contact force, a normal reaction, which we have going out there, and I'll call that R Newtons. You've got the tension in the string or rope that connects the two particles together and that too is T Newtons and just say at this point why are they the same? Well it's because the pulley is smooth. Now because the uh, plane is smooth there's no friction on the particle. Um, if there was friction would act to oppose motion or would act down the plane. So uh, there's none of that in this particular example. Now we've got to mark on the accelerations of the particles. So let's take the 15 kilogram mass. That's going to accelerate downwards. So I'll have an acceleration arrow there. And that's going to be A meters per second per second. And as this moves down, so too is P going to move up the plane. And what would this have as an acceleration? Well, it'll have the same acceleration as this. And why is that? Because the string is inextensible, doesn't stretch. So as soon as this moves, this particle will start to move up. So that's why the accelerations are exactly the same. So we've got to find the acceleration and the tensions then. So how do we do this? Well, in questions like this, what we normally do is we consider each particle. So I'm going to start by considering the let's just put it up here, the 15 kilogram mass, okay? So we'll just say consider the 15 kilogram mass. That's essentially Q and R. And what we'll do is resolve in the direction of motion. So that's resolving downwards. So resolving downwards, we've got the resultant force downwards, which is going to be 15 G minus T. So 15G minus the tension, that's the overall force, and that force is equal to the mass times the acceleration, so 15 times A, 15A. Okay, now we've got two unknowns in here, T and A, so we can't do much in solving this, so we'll just put it on hold and call it equation 1. We need another equation. And the standard thing to do here is to resolve in the direction of motion for the other particle. So if we take P, we'll resolve up the plane. So if we just say here, consider P and resolve up the plane. Up the plane then is positive. So what is the force up the plane? Well, we've got all of T acting up the plane, so that's going to be T. Now, what we normally do is we put in a dotted line somewhere down here, and we've got a dotted line in this direction here. Now, we've got the angle alpha. The angle alpha is going to show up as this angle in here. And so the 5G needs to be split into two components because the 5G is not on this dotted line. It can be split into a component down the plane or a component in this direction. We're interested in the one down the plane and that one does not contain this angle alpha in this interval here of 90 degrees. So when that happens, it's sine alpha that we use. 5G sine alpha is the downward force, the downward component. And that's in the direction that opposes that. 
So that is minus 5g sine alpha. And that equals the mass, which is 5, times the acceleration a. So this is the second equation, so we'll just number that 2. And we can solve these equations. So we can eliminate t between the two equations by simply adding them together. So if we add them together, we just do 1 plus equation 2. What does that give us? Well, we have t here and minus t, so that's going to cancel out. And we've got 15g minus 5g sine alpha. So we've got 15g minus 5g sine alpha. But we know that sine alpha, we're told, is 3 fifths or 0 0.6. It's up to you what you put in. I'm going to put 3 fifths in. So that's the minus 5g sine alpha. And then we've got to add the accelerations. We've got 15a and 5a here, so that's going to make 20a. Now, clean this up. These two 5s cancel, so we're just 5 into 5 goes that once and that once there. So we've got 15g minus 3g, which is 12g. So we therefore have 12g equals 20a. And so divide both sides by 20, and you've got a equals 12g over 20. 12g over 20, or 3 fifths g, work it out on your calculator with g at 9.8, and you get 5.88 meters per second per second for a. Now that we've got a, we can substitute that back into either equation 2 or 1 and work out what t is. Well, I'm going to substitute in equation 1, leave it up to you for what you want to do. So we we'll just say sub a equals, and what I'm going to do is take not 5.88 but 12 twentieths g. This cancels by the way, we can divide through by 4 and you've got 3 and a 5 here. So it's 3 fifths g. I'm going to put that into equation 1 instead of 5.88. So what we have is 15g minus the tension t equals 15 times a at 3 fifths g. I did that because working in g to me is going to be a lot quicker and easier. So we can cancel the 5 into 5 goes 1, into that goes 3. And so what I've got is 9g here. So rearranging this, we end up with 15g minus 9g equals t. And so that leaves me with t equaling 6g. And if you take g to be 9.8, then you're going to end up with 58.8 newtons for the tension. OK? So in part one, they wanted the acceleration, so that's going to be 5.88 then meters per second per second. And in part two, they wanted the tension in the string, and that's going to be 58.8 newtons. Well, that brings us now to the end of the first part of this question.